Are you planning a trip to Universal Orlando and feel overwhelmed and don't know where to begin? Well, you need to watch this video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Crystal Palace. Are you planning a trip to Universal Orlando and have tons of questions and just don't know where to begin? Well, in this video, I'm sharing the top questions that I get asked about visiting Universal Orlando. So in today's video, I will be sharing the most common questions that I get asked about Universal and of course, answering them to help you maybe plan your trip or if you're considering coming to Universal, make that decision, come down to the beautiful Universal Orlando. All right, let's get into it. One of the most common questions I get is about food. And as a New Yorker, I am proud to talk about food all the time here on the Crystal Palace. So I usually get the question, where is the best place to eat in Universal City Walk? Now there are truly so many options and the best thing about eating in City Walk is that you don't need a park ticket in order to eat here. So this is a free way to kind of experience Universal, but not needing a park ticket. So if it's your first day or your last day, or you just don't have a Universal park ticket period, but you still wanna to come to City Walk and enjoy it, you can eat at one of the many, many, many restaurants. So here in City Walk, if you're looking for a nice sit down place, you can get that. My personal favorites are Toothsome Chocolate Emporium. I also love NBC Grill for a nice sports bar vibe. I recently visited Big Fire for the first time right over here. If you wanna check that video out, it was an interesting experience. You're gonna to have to watch the video to see exactly what I mean with that. But there are a lot of nice sit down restaurants. Now there's also quick service. So don't forget, there's Burger King, Whopper Bar, there's Panda Express, there's some of those cool quick eat if you're dining on a budget or you just want something nice quick and easy i also really like ben the bow upstairs on the upper level of city walk they have bread box which is nice sandwiches quick easy meals here you really can't go wrong with any of these options in city walk or maybe you're like me and you love a nice sweet treat you're gonna have to check out my favorite voodoo donuts you're gonna see people walking around with those iconic pink boxes and you're gonna wanna get some. So right here, Voodoo Donuts, you can also mobile order. This is a mobile order pickup, which I highly recommend, especially after a long day in the parks because the line for Voodoo Donuts gets extremely long. There are also, of course, tons of places to eat inside the parks as well. If you want a nice table service, sit down meal in Universal Studios Florida, I highly recommend Finnegan's. If you want one over in Islands, Mythos is the way to go. I recommend getting a reservation if you can but the good thing about universal is you don't like need one like over in disney it's not going to make or break your trip but it's still good to have you know you might be able to get a walk up if you're lucky if you're not visiting during a super busy time of the year but you know can't hurt to make a reservation you can always cancel it they won't charge you here at the park entrance of Universal Studios Florida, they do have a little dining reservations booth. I've never actually made reservations here, but if you want to make some in person for some of the sit down restaurants, you can do that. A nice quick service option is the new Minion Cafe, especially if you have kids. This is going to be a great place. They have great kids meals here. This is one of my favorite quick services in all of Universal Orlando. The most common question I get asked overall has to be when is the best time to visit Universal Orlando. So this is different for everybody because you know maybe you have kids in school and they can't take off that many days or maybe you work and you can't take off that many days or you only have a certain amount of time to visit the parks. So here's just my opinion on the absolute best time to visit. Let's start the beginning of the year, January. So of course we have New Year's Eve, which is a mob scene here. And then we have Martin Luther King Jr. weekend and that's gonna be crowded too. So pretty much a rule of thumb is whenever there's a long weekend or of course like a holiday or a school break, the parks are going to be very crowded, more crowded than usual. And of course, that's the time people usually come because you know, your kids are off, you might be off from work. But I will say I do feel like summer is less crowded in general than those holiday breaks, especially spring break. Spring break is probably the most crowded time here at Universal especially, but summer is hot. So it's like, you know, it's kind of a trade off. You kind of get less crowds because it's more spread out from May to September when kids are off from school rather than spring break where everybody's off just this one week or this one weekend. And then we have summer, the Florida heat is a lot. So last summer we were over in Disney in July and it was 119 degrees outside, unbearable. <laughs> but you know, the crowds weren't that bad. March and April spring break is gonna be a mob scene. Another favorite time, 
of mine is May. I like going in May a lot. I know some Florida schools get out in May, but overall it's not that busy. Then you get into September and October in the fall, which are also very nice times of the year to visit. Once again, just keeping in mind those school spring breaks are gonna be more crowded. And of course, if you're into horror, and I'm not talking about like Mickey's Very Merry Halloween Party, I'm talking about actual horror that you will be so scared, then you're gonna wanna come in September and October to, for, to visit Halloween Horror Nights here at Universal. I have tons of Halloween Horror Nights videos. I'll link them in the description down below if you wanna learn more about that. And then it's Christmas, which is gonna be busier the closer you get to Christmas, of course. One of my favorite times to visit is early December, like December 1 through the 10th, 11th, 12th. December 9th is my birthday, so I'm kind of biased to that time of the year, but it's so nice. Universal holidays, it's all included in your park tickets. That's a whole nother, it's a whole nother video, all the universal events, but they're all so great. But holidays is a great time to visit as well. It's not that hot and you'll have so much fun. So now let's go into the next question, and that is, what are the best tips for first-time visitors? Where should you stay if you're visiting for the first time? How many days should you stay if you're visiting for the first time? So if you're visiting Universal Orlando for the first time, I do have a bunch of tips to share with you. I actually have a Universal First Timers video if you want to see complete in-depth guide if this is your first time visiting universal i highly recommend you check that out but the most important thing is probably to just do your research and you obviously are right now by watching a crystal palace video so yay but on my channel i have a bunch of different topics all hotels you can stay at tips and tricks how to skip the line at universal pretty much everything you need to know about universal orlando is on the crystal palace youtube channel of course, if you have any questions specifically that I don't cover in this video, you can leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Another common question I get pretty often is how many days you should visit Universal. And my personal recommendation is two to four days. Two days, you know, one for each park. If you want to visit Volcano Bay, three to four might be better. And Universal often runs deals like buy two day tickets and get two days free. That's like insane. I still can't even wrap my head around that deal because you're getting two free days at the park just by buying a two day ticket. If you want to stay up to date with all the deals and offers, I recommend checking out theparkprodigy.com. You can get discounted tickets there and you can use the code thecrystalpalace10 at checkout to save even more, but they have vacation planners. So I recommend my friends that have kids and they don't really want to deal with the whole vacation planning process to just use the Park Prodigy, use the code thecrystalpalace10 to save and it just makes for a stress-free vacation. They also do Disney World, which is a whole nother beast, so I definitely recommend Vacation Planner for that and Universal Hollywood and Disneyland tickets. And on the topic of first timers, another very big question I get is where to stay. And I do have a complete video guide of comparing all eight Universal Orlando hotels. I stayed at all eight of them, so I can recommend which one might be great for you and your family. But just to give you a quick overview, if you want the Express Pass, you might want to consider staying at a Premier Resort, Hard Rock Hotel, Royal Pacific, or Portofino Bay, as those hotels do include the Express Pass in your stay. If you want to go for a more budget-friendly value stay, the Endless Summer Resorts are great. Cabana Bay is amazing for families, but you could check out all those hotels on the Crystal Palace YouTube channel. I definitely do recommend staying on site at Universal. You can't go wrong. You get so many perks like free transportation to the parks, which is huge. Most of the hotels are walking distance besides endless summer. You get merchandise delivery, resort-wide charging privileges. It's just really worth it to stay on site if you're doing, especially if you're doing a complete Universal Orlando stay. And you can get some really great rates too, especially at those endless summer resorts. Another question I get asked pretty often is, what's a must do for you snack or what's the best snack in Universal? And if you watch any of my other videos, you know it is absolutely Absolutely, the jacket potato. You can find it right here, the London Taxi Hut, right outside of Diagon Alley. And I do want to mention while we're here, be sure that you don't skip Diagon Alley because it's right through here, right? So you might miss it. You're going to see the night bus right out here. You don't want to miss Diagon Alley because it might be hard to find if you've never been here. So it's right there. But across from it, more importantly, is the London Taxi Hut where you can find the best snack the jacket potato. 
My personal favorite is the shepherd's pie. I love the broccoli and cheddar too. Or you can just get a plain potato, which is a little less expensive than the $11.49 you're gonna pay for the loaded ones. Another common and important question I get asked is how to make the most of your day if you have one or two days at Universal. And I would definitely say, first, consider the Express Pass, especially if you only have one day between both parks. You're really gonna want that Express Pass just to be sure you get every ride done. And you can definitely do it if you have that Express Pass. You get here right in the morning and you leave right at park close. If you're staying at a premier hotel, you actually get the Express Pass for two days, even with a one night stay, because you'll get it for the day you check in and you'll also get it for the day you check out. So that might be worth it, something to do and consider. My other tip to make the most out of your one or two days here at Universal is to definitely do early park admission. It'll let you in if you're staying at a Universal Orlando hotel to the parks one hour before the parks open. You'll be able to ride the most popular ride, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, one hour early while the crowds are not bad. My other suggestion would be to stay late and try to hit those most popular rides like Hagrid's and the Velocicoaster at night. You can get in line for rides up until, so say the park closes at 7 p.m. you can get in line at 6 59 and you'll be good you'll be able to ride now do keep in mind that universal parks close pretty early especially if you're visiting on off-peak times like tonight the park is closing at 7 p.m. and it's the end of February also if you're visiting during Mardi Gras or the holidays and they have parades you can go on some rides during the parade because a lot of people will be watching the parade which leaves the rest of the park pretty crowdless. So I'm here at Universal Orlando quite often, pretty much every month of the year. So a lot of people ask me, what is one ride that like you have to do every single time you're here? So over here in Universal Studios, Florida, it is definitely going to be Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. I love that ride. It's so unique. Over in Islands, Hagrid's is absolutely my favorite ride in all of Universal Orlando. You must do it. If you're here for one day, wait online for it. If you're here for two days, definitely do it at least once when you're here at Universal Orlando. But all the rides are really so much fun. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Doesn't cost anything. It's free for you to smash that like button right down below and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. We're just having fun here at Universal. So no one asked me this, but if you are wondering what my favorite donut is in Universal, Larla donuts in the morning just hit different. Right here in the Simpsons land, they are so good. They kind of taste like Krispy Kreme. They're different than Voodoo Donuts. I highly recommend trying out a Larla. And if your heart desires to buy a big lard lad donut or the big pink, you can do that. You can get these at the lard lad stand or we're here in the quickie mart right now. But I do recommend trying out the smaller ones as I do like those a little better and you can get glazed, just a regular size donut. These are $10.99. We are back at Endless Summer to end the video just to show you that this is probably one of my favorite resorts we're at Endless Summer Surfside just because of the value. You really can't beat it. This day we got for $93 a night. Sometimes we get it for like $60 a night. If you're an annual pass holder, you can book annual pass holder rates, which is pretty cool because you get a great, great, great discount. Sometimes it's like 30% off. It, it really helps being an annual pass holder. So if you're coming for five days or a week, especially looking to get an annual pass, you get a lot of discounts in the parks, you get hotel discounts. It might be worth it for you and your family to do that. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and it answered some of your top questions about Universal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the Crystal Palace right down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.